Good afternoon to all of you. So now I will be discussing the last topic of module 2 which is the communicable disease. So communicable disease is also this uh, as also very important for us caregivers so we will know uh, what we will do if we will be handling or we will be assigned to a community which needs our care. So what are those things that we need to to do what are the precautions okay how we will identify uh, one diseases from another so these are the things that i will be discussing today so communicable diseases are diseases that are spread from one person to the other disease that are catching disease that are caused by germs or pathogens okay examples of this are viruses bacteria, parasitic worms, and fungi. So, uh, we have different modes of transmission. Modes of transmission means kung paano na ipapasa yung isang sakit. So, we have direct contact. We have, uh, direct contact is exposure to infected body fluids such as blood or saliva. Okay? Uh, this is direct contact. If you, you, you touch someone okay, who is infected by a certain disease, like for example, MRSA, if you touch the person with MRSA, okay, and then you did not wash or forgot, to, you forget to wash, okay, you can acquire that uh, kind of disease because the mode of transmission is by contact. Then we have also vector and reservoirs, okay, those. Uh, diseases that uses vectors or animals or reservoirs to infect other uh, organism. So it's like a mosquito, like mosquito, mosquito have uh, many uh, diseases, okay? Mosquito is a vector of many diseases. So germs are spread by an animal or insect through a bite. So this is vector and reservoir. We can get also from food and water, like uh, if we're having diarrhea, uh, di diarrhea, maybe uh, we are getting these microorganisms from the food which is contaminated or the water that we are drinking. Uh, airborne, these are germs are spread through the air, for example, when someone coughs or sneezes. Okay, airborne, uh, it's not written here. Airborne is different from uh, droplet, okay? If we're talking about droplet, like what coronavirus, coronavirus uh, is, okay? The mode of transmission of coronavirus is droplet. It's not airborne. What is the difference between airborne and droplet? Droplet is mas malaki yung, yung, Pag nag-sneeze ka, mas malaki yung mga uh, uh, yung mga tumalsik sa'yo like sneeze and cough. But airborne is naiiwan sila sa naiiwan sila sa hangin. So, mas maliliit siya. So, uh, kaya N95 ang best na mas mo pag may airborne disease kasi nga maliliit siya at kanya niyang pumasok sa normal na surgical mask lang. So, pakidagdag po dito ang droplet. Okay? So, airborne, an example ng airborne, yun yung mga PTB. PTB, pulmonary tuberculosis, okay, mga measles, mga influenza, airborne yan. Yung mga droplet, yan, na, yan yung mga coronavirus, pneumonia, uh, meningitis, uh, and, ano po ba? So, yun yung mga example ng droplet. Then, in the recontact, those pathogens remain on surfaces that were in contact with an infected person. For example, one mode of transmission din ng coronavirus natin is in the recontact. For example, matching si patient, okay, nalagay siya sa isang matching siya, and yung hinaching niya is napunta sa may table. And then, hinawakan mo yung table, so pwede kang ma-infect. So, ang tawag doon is indirect contact. Hindi ka nag-direct contact doon sa may infected person, but nahawa ka dahil dun uh, sa surface kung saan humaching yung patient uh, napunta yung 
uh, microorganisms. So, yun yung indirect contact. So, we have examples of uh, communicable diseases. We have the chicken pox, we have the diphtheria, we have the filariasis, we have the AIDS, we have the poliomyelitis, we have the malaria, we have the measles, tuberculosis, tetanus, rabies, and sexually transmitted disease. So, himayin natin siya isa-isa. So, let's start with chicken pox. So, chicken pox is a common disease caused by the varicella zoster virus. So, ang tawag sa virus na nagkukos ng chicken pox is varicella zoster virus, which is a member of the herpes virus family. Usually occurs during childhood, normally 5 to 8, uh, 5 to eight, five to 9, but you can get it anytime in your life. So, ano ang mga uh, symptoms na pwede kang magkaroon pag may chicken pox? So, nakikita nyo sa picture. So, ganyan ang pagkakaroon ng chicken pox. So, you have a fever, you have body aches, wala kang gana kumain. Within two, one to two days, the rash appears. Begin as a red spot, which then form blisters and spread to the rest of the body. So, anong prevention natin sa chicken pox? There are no actual cures for it. But you can get a vaccine shot to prevent it. Okay, meron na tayong mga available sa market ng mga preventive uh, vaccines na pwede nating uh, itake or i-inject. But sweet uh, and cooked meal, baking soda or cor cornstarch can help relieving itching. Usually, kaya nagkakaroon ng itching because your sweat is... Uh, Maasim, it's acidic. So to counter uh, the acidity, you can put baking soda and cornstarch because they are alkaline or basic. Okay. Then Tylenol is used for fever. So it's a anti-analgesic and it's also anti... It, Tylenol is for fever. Okay. Then... We can give antiviral. Of course, the causative agent is virus. So we, we need to give antiviral. So antiviral is different from antibiotic. Antibiotic, the causative microorganism should be bacteria. So if you're giving antiviral to the patient with bacterial infection, it will not take effect. So make sure that when you're taking medication, especially if you have cough and cold, you should consult first the doctor because you don't know if your uh, if your illness is due to virus or bacteria. Okay, that's why you're wondering why I took already seven days of antibiotic, but still I have illness. Okay, so you should know if it's viral or it's uh, it's viral or it's bacterial. You can put calamine lotion on the uh, pox to help stop the itching. So, yan yung tawag sa lotion na binibigay natin. Next disease is the diphtheria. Diphtheria is caused by a microorganism caused by Corini bacterium diphtheriae. Okay? So, signs and symptoms, anong may, ano ang patognomonic sign ng may diphtheria? Ano yung pinaka malalaman mo na itong sakit na to may diphtheria? First is meron siyang sore throat. Okay, may sore throat siya. May makikita kang tinatawag na pseudo membrane na tinatawag. Pseudo membrane is may makikita ka sa lalamunan na kulay puti. Okay? So it's an abnormal which is caused by the microorganisms Corinobacterium diphtheriae. So it means that your patient have diphtheria. So airway obstruction, of course, if there is a problem with sore throat so, doon yung daanan din ng hangin. So, pwedeng magkaroon ng airway obstruction. Pwede tayong mahirap. Pwedeng mahirap ang huminga yung patient. So, pwede rin siyang magkaroon ng shock. Mode of transmission. Okay, paano natin nakukuha to? It is spread by droplets. Okay, spread by droplets. Secretions, direct contact for nutrition, low vaccine, coverage among infants and uh, children. So, ano ang binibigay na vaccine para sa diphtheria? It is the DPT. So, if you're, if you have a child, baby, okay, you need to have, your baby need to have three shots of DPT vaccines. Okay, DPT vaccines. So, DPT means diphtheria, pertussis, and tetanus. So, these three illnesses are the one preventing by the 
DPT vaccines. So prevention is sanitary reduced carrier rate by use of vaccine. As I've told you, the vaccine uh, is DPT. Then chemotherapeutics, so of course, this is bacterial. So you need antibacterial or antibiotic drugs like penicillin, erythromycin, or gentamicin. So next uh, disease is the filariasis. Okay, what you will notice in the patient with filariasis, they have a fat or it's like an elephant legs or an elephant uh, limbs or arms, okay? So they are calling it as elephant chassis, elephant chassis, okay? So this is the classic signs and symptoms, okay? If you leave all of this, leave all of this, just remember that filariasis is related to elephant chassis. Filariasis is caused by three nematodes, okay? Pucoria, Bancropti, Bulgari, Brugia, Malayi, and Brugia Timori. This is the microorganisms that is brought by a bite of mosquito. Okay, so this is what they have. Sometimes these elephant chassis, the genitals also, they become big, okay? Not only the legs and the arms, but also their genitals. Why? Why? Uh, it's why this uh, symptoms appear because what the filariasis microorganisms or the nematodes uh, is attacking is your lymph nodes. Okay, so your lymph nodes. You have so much lymph nodes in your legs and in your arms. So if they attack your lymph nodes, okay, it will swell. Okay. And you will notice that it will make your feet and feet and arms to be like an elephant. Okay, so this is the uh, reaction of the lymph nodes to your uh, to the infection. So prevention for filariasis is treating the infection by cooling the leg and drying and exercising. Cooling the leg so the swelling will be subside. Okay, drying and then exercise. You need to exercise it. Okay, exercise all the limbs, so it will, so the swelling will be decreased. Then treatment and prevention also will be the anti antifilarial drugs, which is the diethyl carbamazepine, ivermectin, albanazole, and coumarin. Okay, don't remember all of these medications because you're not a doctor. Only remember what are your uh, independent interventions as caregiver because this one, this is the responsibility of the doctor to give the medication. AIDS. AIDS is acquired immunodeficiency syndrome. So HIV virus is the virus that causes the AIDS. Okay, I'll repeat AIDS is the disease and HIV is the causative microorganism. Okay. The disease limits the body's ability to fight infection due to the markedly reduced helper T cells. So what happens if you have AIDS? It attacks your helper T cells. Helper T cells is your WBC who fight to the infection. So if the AIDS uh, attack your helper T cells, who will fight for you? Okay, if you have infection. So the tendency is your infection, so your, your immune system will be weak. So any, any disease, any illness, okay, can invade your body because you don't have uh, a strong helper T cells or WBC, okay, who will fight for you. So that's what happened to AIDS. So they are so uh, they are very sensitive. Okay, if you have patients, if you have family with AIDS, okay, if you have uh, sipon ubo, wag na kayo lumapit sa kanila kasi mabilis silang mahawa. So symptoms is fever, headache, neuropathy, sores, rashes, nausea, and vomiting. AIDS usually hindi siya agad hindi siya agad lumalabas. 
madedetect mo lang na may AIDS ang tao pag meron na siyang mga secondary symptoms okay or secondary diseases like pneumonia, tuberculosis. Okay, hindi sila and paano mo sila idedetect? Syempre natatakot din sila magpa-check. Kasi nga this is like a stigma pag sinabi mo sa ibang tao, i-judge sila or pwede silang uh, pwede silang sabihin ng hindi magaganda. So, malalaman mo lang na may AIDS ang tao pag kinonfine siya kasi nahirapan namin ngayon pala may pneumonia na siya kasi nga uh, nagkaroon siya ng infection kasi nga wala na siyang helper T cells or mahina na helper T cells niya or meron siyang nagkaroon siya ng TB, secondary diseases. So, doon mo lang malalaman na mayroong AIDS ang tao. So, paano na, na, natatransfer ang AIDS? It's but, but blood and body fluids transmission. So, ibig sabihin, if you are having sex with someone with someone with uh, AIDS, okay? Someone with AIDS, of course, you will be, you will get the disease. If you share needles, like for example, if you prick by a needle used to uh, patients with AIDS, okay, possible that you can have uh, the disease. And sterilized blades, unprotected intercourse, and mother of the baby. 99% na kung ang nanay ng baby ay isang HIV positive, 99% na ilalabas ng anak ay HIV positive din. So, that is AIDS. So, ano mga prevention ng AIDS? Some ways to protect yourself. Monogamous relationships. Ibig sabihin, isang, isang tao. Isang uh, tao lang ang magkakaroon ka ng relationship, hindi iba-iba. Then, protected sex. Always use condom or other contraceptives if you're having sex with others. Then, sterile needles. Okay, sterile needles. If you have, if you have been pricked okay, by a needle which is unknown Okay, hindi mo alam kung ang patient mo is meron pala siyang HIV, report it uh, immediately to your supervisor so they will do the needful for you. New shaving and cutting blades, antiretroviral drugs. Antiretroviral drugs are those drugs which is used for, for uh, AIDS. Okay, so usually these are the antiviral drugs, Sidovodine, Navirapin, and Ritonavir. Poliomyelitis is a highly infectious disease caused by at least serotypes of poliovirus. If you saw a patient with poliomyelitis, okay, you will see that one leg is smaller than the other and that patient is para paralytic. Okay, katulad ni uh, sino bang Apollinario Mabini. So, hindi siya nakakalakad. So, that is the effect of poliomyelitis. Okay? You have fever, uh, febrile illness. You have the aseptic meningitis. Ang pinaka-signs and symptoms nila is yung paralytic disease. So, paralyzed sila buong, uh, buong buhay nila. So, ang mode of transmission niya is oral-oral infection, direct droplet infection, pwede rin fecal-oral infection, foodborne ingestion, had to mouth infection. General prevention Health promotion through environmental sanitation, health education for the mode of spread, protective value of vaccination. So, anong vaccine ang nilalagay ang ginagamit natin to prevent this? Okay, pagbata para rin yung mga anak natin, kailangan is magkaroon sila ng OPV, oral polio, oral polio vaccine. So, ito yung prevention natin sa polio. So, meron tayong intramuscular and or oral polio, but the one usually given is oral polio vaccine. Okay. Next disease is the malaria. Malaria is, uh, maybe you are so familiar with malaria because it is a famous disease caused by a mosquito bite. So, it is caused by four plasmodium species, the plasmodium falciparum, vivax, malariae, and ovale. So, since signs and symptoms are chills, fever, internal fever, body aches. Okay, chills are usually with malaria. 
So that is the common signs and symptoms ng patient mo may malaria. And kung nagpunta siya sa mga lugar na malaria infected site like sa Palawan, sa Africa and other site na merong nalaganap yung malaria. Then mode of transmission, it is transmitted by female anopheles mosquito. Usually, malaria is caused by a female mosquito bite, not the male mosquito bite. So, meron siyang life cycle of malarial parasites, so it's not so significant. So, prevention, use a spray containing permethrin on your clothes. So, yung mga off lotion. So, kailangan naglalagay tayo ng mga ganyan to prevent yung uh, dapuan tayo or kagatin tayo ng mga uh, lamok. Insect repellent, spray or gel forms. Use coils and mats impregnated with insecticides. Then malaria prophylaxis are taken. Anti-malarial drugs are used as chloroquine. Kaya, uh, by the way, chloroquine is used for those patients who is infected with COVID. Okay, but it's not a proven drug, but it's experimental. But they are using it nowadays. So... This is chloroquine. So prevention, use a spray containing, sorry, I finished already. So that is malaria. Mm. Missiles. Missiles, it is caused by an agent, paramix virus, or genus morbillivirus. Signs and symptoms of missiles are diarrhea, pneumonia, and subacute sclerosing pancephalitis, or they are calling it as coplex spot. Coplex spot uh, is like this. Okay, yan yung mapapansin nyo sa mga patient na may missiles. So, modes of transmission, it is transmitted by a droplet infection four days before and four days after rush. So, prevention of missiles are live attenuated vaccines. We have vaccines already for missiles. Uh, that is called MMR. Missiles, mumps, rubella. So these are the medicate. So these are the vaccines that we are used to have in our infancy, infancy stage. Okay, so mga may anak kayo na usually it's six months or nine months binibigay. So missiles vaccine has to be given at nine months. If missile vaccine is given at three months gap, it's advisable to give MMR vaccine. The vaccine should be reconstituted with the diluent supplied. After reconstitution, the vaccine should be used immediately. If the vaccine is not used immediately, then it should be stored in a dark 2 to 8 for no longer than 8 hours because it is po photosensitive. Ibig sabihin ng photosensitive medications, uh, mawawala yung effectivity nila pag na-expose sila sa light. Tuberculosis. Tuberculosis, alam natin to, sakit ng mga Pilipino, especially yung mga may hirap. Kasi tuberculosis is defined as an infectious disease caused by bacterium, mycobacterium tuberculosis. Okay, that most affects the uh, lungs. Okay, nice to know. Tuberculosis, okay, mycobacterium uh, microorganisms, these are also the one causing the uh, leprosy. Leprosy is uh, sa Tagalog ang leprosy? Ketong. Okay? Mycobacterium species din ang nagkukos ng leprosy or ng ketong. So, anong meron sa tuberculosis? Anong signs and symptoms? Ang pinaklasik sa tuberculosis, it is night sweats. Usually, pinagpapawisan lang sila tuwing gabi. So, meron din silang slight fever. We have the wet uh, weight loss and fatigue. So, anong transmission niya? Of course, tuberculosis is a number one example of airborne 
transmission. So, ang mga taong mayroong airborne diseases is kailangang nakalagay sa isang negative pressure room. Ibig sabihin ng negative pressure room, yung hangin sa buong room ay may exhaust sa taas or sa labas para pag may pumasok na walang tuberculosis ay hindi siya mahahawa. And lahat ng patient na may airborne disease, dapat pag uh, inalagaan nyo, dapat meron kayong N95. Not only surgical mask, but N95. Because this is for airborne diseases. So prevention is, your doctor may prescribe a medicine called isoniazid to prevent the tuberculosis infection from developing into the active disease and making you feel sick. If you contract tuberculosis of the abdominal or of the extrapulmonary, you may have the choice of mainstay therapy. Okay? And the course is 9 to 12 months. Usually, ang treatment ng tuberculosis is 9 to 12 months. So, ang, sa Pilipinas, libre lang ang gamot sa TB. Every morning, before breakfast, dapat ititake mo yung anti-TB medications. Walang kain. Kasi hindi na siya effective pag kumain ka. Dapat empty stomach. And of course, airborne precaution for those patients na may PTB. Next is tetanus. Tetanus is a neurological disease characterized by increased muscle tone and spasms. Okay, spasms is naninigas yung mga muscles mo. Okay, nagkakos siya ng clostridium. Uh, agent niya is clostridium tetani. Natatagpuan ng clostridium tetani sa soil. Okay, so kung nakapaa ka, may sugat ka, so mapaka dun sa soil na mayroong clostridium tetani, pwede kang ma-infect ng tetanus. Okay. So, ito ang tao na may tetanus. Usually, ang merong siya, ang, ang classical symptoms ng may uh, tetanus is uh, lockjaw and spasm. Okay. Naninigas ang mga ma uh, muscles nila. Trismus, hyperexia, dysphagia, and then rigidity. Lockjaw. Okay. Minsan naglalockjaw din sila. Mode of transmission, as I've told you, kung meron kang sugat o mapa ka sa, sa, sa soil na mayroong clostridium tetani, okay, pwede kang ma-infect. Dadaan siya sa wound mo. Then, prevention goal is to eliminate the source of toxin. You neutralize the toxin and prevent muscle spasm and providing support. Okay? Ang pinakamahirap pag nagkaroon ka ng tetanus kasi nga tinatamaan yung muscles mo and ang lungs mo is kinokontrol ng muscles like yung diaphragm and marami pa sa pu puso mo is muscles. So kung yan ay nagkaroon ng spasm, nagkaroon ng spasm ay mahirapan kang huminga. So usually if they are admitted in the ICU, continuous careful observation and cardiopulmonary monitoring. Minimize stimulation kasi mas lalo silang nai stress mas lalo silang nag i -spasam. Protect airway kasi nga, sabi ko sa inyo is daanan ng hangin din or yung lungs is controlled by a muscles. That's why it, they, it can affect the muscles which controlling your breathing and you will have difficulty breathing. Then you have two preparations. Of course, you are using the DPT vaccine for this because T in DPT is tetanus. So it's preventing uh, tetanus. Then we have the rabies. Rabies is a viral disease that causes acute encephalitis in a warm-blooded animal. So usually it can be transmitted by humans from any other species, a rabid species, okay, especially a dog, a cat, a rat, or other micro uh, other species which ha can have uh, rhabdovirus. So, yun yung tawag sa virus na meron sila. So, rabies virus infects the CNS cause disease in brain and death. Okay? Meron silang paralysis, anxiety, insomnia, confusion, nagwawala talaga. Pag meron kang rabies is nagwawala. Like yung mga rabies, may rabies na aso na nagwawala. Ganon din yung tao. 
So, pumupunta kasi sa utak yung rhabdovirus. Kaya ganun, hallucinations, delirium. Meron din silang tinatawag na uh, ang tag dito? Hydrophobia. Okay? Uh, ang rabies is meron silang takot sila sa tubig. Hydrophobia. So, pag nagbukas ka ng gripo sa harap nila is magiging agitated sila. So, yun yung merong katangian, natatanging katangian pag may, ang tao ay mayroong rabies. Mode of transmission, rabies may also spread through exposure to infected domestic animals. Okay? So, make sure you, if you're taking care of animals, you'll be responsible for them. Okay? So, make them uh, to have vaccine so they cannot infect you and they cannot infect others. So, keeping pets under supervision, not handling wild animals or stray, contracting an animal control officer upon observing a wild animal. Then, if bitten by an animal, washing the wound with soap and water for 10 to 15 minutes and contacting a healthcare. Okay, you should contact immediately and go to a nearest hospital if you, you're being, being bitten by a, a rabid uh, species because it's very fast na mag na magte-trans na pupunta sa utak niyo and fatal siya pwede kayong mamatay and sa dog hindi niyo kakatayin ang dog gagawin yung asusena at kakainin at ipupulutan so ang dog na mayroong rabies is pupugutin ng ulo yung ulo is sent sa isang uh, infectious disease center like our, I, I, uh, San Lazaro at uh, sa Pilipinas. Basta infectious center. Then they will check and they will confirm that the dog have rhabdovirus. Okay? So, huwag niyong gawing pulutan. Then, uh, next is sexually transmitted disease. So, sexually transmitted disease is like AIDS na uh, nakukuha mo through body and body blood and body fluids transmission. So infection which are capable of being spread by person through sexual intercourse, oral genital contact, or in non-sexual ways, and then IV drug. Then some STDs are chlamydia, we have the gonorrhea, we have the syphilis, candidiasis, and yes fungus. Okay. So, lahat sila merong same signs and symptoms. You have the source. Okay, source is yung parang may mga bukol-bukol sa uh, genital area mo. Blood in the urine. Burning sensation when urinating. Rashes. Makate. May mga warts. Unusual discharge. Okay? Then, most of transmission, it's sexual intercourse. If you're having oral sex, okay, you can transfer the microorganisms through that. And then, IV drug. So prevention is abstinence, know your partner, limit your partner's monogamous relationship, visit your doctor and always look and then keep it clean. Okay, so that's the end of the presenta presentation. I hope you learn from communicable diseases. So after this, you will have a uh, final examination of module 2. I hope everyone will study. Then I'll be discussing I'll be discussing also the answers to your exams. Okay, let's start with vital signs. Okay, so what is the normal values of your adult pulse rate? Your adult pulse rate, okay, so your adult pulse rate, I need the number and the unit. I told you before, I will not accept 
those answers without units because we don't know if it's pulse rate, if it's respiratory rate, or whatever. So it should have always a unit. So pulse rate normal for adult is 60 to 100 beats per minute. Next is normal values. Sorry. Next is normal values of respiratory rate is 12 to 20 breaths per minute or 12 to 20 cycles per minute. Next, normal blood pressure, okay, not a range. I, I'm telling not a range, specific. It should be 120 to one, 120 over. 180 HH MG ah, sorry millimeter per mercury mm HG then next is normal values of oxygen saturation it should be 95 to 100 percent 95 to 100 percent then, normal values of capillary glucose should be 80 to 120 mg per dl. 80 to 120 mg per dl. Okay. So, in matching type, you match column A to column B. So, just this is like a medical term. You just match it with the medical term above okay with the definition so it is a decreased blood pressure decreased blood pressure is all decrease is hypo all increase is hyper all rapid or all increase is uh, tacky and all low or decrease it's bradi so that's the uh, that's the point so decreased blood pressure, it is hypotension. Increase respiratory rate. Increase respiratory rate, it is uh, tachypnea. Decrease respiratory rate, it is bradypnea. Decrease temperature, it is hypothermia decrease blood pressure it is sorry increase blood pressure it is hypertension difficulty breathing it is dyspnea increase temperature it is hyperthermia Increase pulse rate, it is tachycardia. And decrease pulse rate, it is bradycardia. Okay. Breaths, I'll just write it. Breaths per minute. 120 over 80 and is 95 to 100 percent. Place the vital signs that need to be checked in the following circumstances. Write P for temperature, P for pulse rate, and R for respiratory rate, B for blood pressure, C for capillary blood glucose, and O for oxygen saturation. Some of you, they forgot, they don't understand the, the instructions, 
So they are putting the whole the whole uh, word instead of the first word. Okay, so the scenario is if the person complains of dizziness. If the person complains dizziness, you can check the BP, blood pressure. Bakit? Kasi pag nahihilo ang tao, pwedeng mataas ang blood pressure, pwede rin mababa ang blood pressure. So pag nasusuka, pwedeng maraming dahilan pag nasusuka, may, pwedeng may problema sa chan. So uh, pwedeng may problema sa chan like appendicitis or uh, pwedeng nasusuka because inaatake na pala sa puso or nag uh, nag stroke na pala so bp is the best bp is the best thing to check then or pain okay kung tao ay in pain pwede mong i-check malalaman mo na in pain ang tao pag mataas ang vital signs niya especially bp malalaman mo din siya pag tumataas ang pulse rate niya and then pag tumataas ang respiratory rate niya so, alin dito sa tatlo, ito yung mga pwede mong i-check sa ganitong situation. Place the vital signs that need to be checked in case of the circumstance before and anti after antihypertensive medications. Of course, BP lang. Kasi, ang tinatanong dito is antihypertensive gamot para sa high blood. So, ang i-check mo lang is BP medications. Once daily or weekly if admitted to a long-term facility. So, pag mga once daily, lagi mong i-check dyan is yung apat. Temperature, pulse, respiratory rate, and then BP. Pag check ka lang ng oxygen saturation pag ang patient mo is merong uh, sakit, sa bag, uh, sakit sa baga or meron siyang lung problem. Pero yung main at kung long term ang patient mo, ibig sabihin chronic patient na siya, ang check mo lang usually is yung temperature, pulse rate, respiratory rate, and uh, blood pressure. Yung CBG, check mo lang siya pag ang patient is my diabetic. Then, once daily or weekly if admitted, so same, na double ito, pulse rate, respiratory, and blood. You have recently become an employed at a long-term care facility and are still not comfortable with measuring vital signs. While measuring one of your resident's vital signs, you find it to be significantly higher than the normal range indicated by the flow sheet. What should you do? Okay. If this situation happened to you, okay, first things first, kung meron kayong na-check na abnormal, okay, hindi kayo agad pupunta sa supervisor to report or kung hindi kayo comfortable, masyado pa kasi bago pa kayo. So, you need to recheck again. First things first is you recheck again. Then, if still high or in doubt, All your superior. Okay. So, hindi kayo basta-basta lalapit sa nakakataas sa inyo, sa superior nyo or sa supervisor nyo nang wala kayong basihan. Lagi kayong tatanong niya, bakit? Recheck mo na ba? Kasi mamaya, pag recheck mo, is bumaba. So, bakit ka pa nagsabi? You should all, always assess and always reassess. So as a comp co competent caregiver, you need to do uh, you need to do that step. Okay? Hindi ba sa basta magsusumbong sa super superior kasi pwede kayong mapahiya. And sometimes, mataas ang BP dahil hindi mo pala inassess mo na yung patient, pumunta pala sa, sa kakagaling lang pala niya sa, sa banyo kaya mataas. Then, hindi mo siya inassess Hindi ka naghintay ng 20 to 30 minutes, kaya pala siya mataas. Then, nagsabi ka sa supervisor without rechecking. Pagbalik ni supervisor, syempre, bababa na siya. So, you should always recheck. If you're uncomfortable, you're not, uh, you're in doubt of your, then you call the supervisor also. Then, if a person has been exercising, let the person rest for how many minutes? 
So you can, the person can rest 10 to 20 minutes. Some books, they are telling 20 to 30 minutes. Or 20 to 30 minutes. Then when listening to a blood pressure, the first sound you hear is the systolic. Okay. Some of you, they put systolic pressure. Pressure is already here. That's why I made it wrong. So it should be systolic. So it will be redundant if you put systolic pressure, pressure. So it only requires systolic. So systolic. And then diastolic pressure. Which pulse site is used during cardio pulmonary station? So in explain ko to kung saan anong gagamitin mo during CPR. Hindi ka pwedeng maggamit ng radial pulse, okay? Dapat ang gagamitin mo is carotid pulse. Bakit? Kasi mas malapit siya sa brains and mas malapit siya sa puso. So pag radial pulse is mahina na masyado, hindi mo na siya ma-appreciate. So dapat doon ka sa mas malapit, which is the carotid pulse. Which pulse site is used when taking blood pressure? So it should be radial So some of the steps in the procedure for taking person's blood pressure are listed below. So write the correct write the correct uh, through the sequence. So the correct answer is Correct answer is D. Wrap the cuff around the person's upper arm where the brachial artery is located. Then H. Place the diaphragm of the stethoscope directly to the brachial artery. Then C. Pump the bulb, which will result in air entering the cuff. Then, A, inflate the cuff slowly until the pulse can be heard. So you're still getting the uh, approximate estimated systolic pressure. Then letter B, continue to inflate the cuff until the pulse cannot be heard. Then, F, continue to inflate the cuff to 30. Okay, because you will add another 30. So, to get the estimated systolic. So, F. Then, letter E, turn the valve on the valve slightly counterclockwise to allow air to escape. Kasi uulit ka ulit to get the real blood pressure. Because at first, you're still getting the estimated estimated systolic pressure then g is note the reading on the manometer when the first krotkov sound is heard and i continue to deflate the cough and note the reading on the manometer when the last krotkov sound is heard so this is the answer. When is the best time to check CBG? So two hours before and two hours after meal. Because that time, na-absorb na ng katawan mo yung mga kinain mo. So that is the best time to check for CBG. What are the factors that affects the result of oxygen saturation? What are the factors that affect the oxygen? So what are those? Code. Vasus pasam. So it's listed in your notes. So pag mas malamig, okay, pag kinuhanan mo ang kamay na malamig, so, mas mababa yung result. So, dapat, painitin mo muna siya. Takpan mo siya ng mga warm blank, warming blanket 
or ng blanket para lumamig. Pag nagbabasospasm siya, nagkakaroon ng vasoconstrictions. Okay? So, pwedeng bumaba din or hindi accurate yung oxygen saturation mo. Pag meron kang carbon monoxide poisoning, so pwedeng karon ka rin ang problema sa effectivity. Okay, so vital signs is finished. I'll forward it to you. Ano ba to? I'll download it. So that's the answer for vital sign. So next is let's proceed with the. So it's very easy if you just understand. Don't overcomplicate things. Uh, let's go with. Let's go with bed making and positioning. It's very easy, and it's very short. <clears throat> so. Bed making and positioning. Mr. Ross cannot get out of bed. You can have to change her bed linen. You, you have to change her bed linens. What will you do to keep Mr. Ross safe while you change the linens? It's very easy, guys. You make it complicated. I saw other students, they put the steps of changing occupied bed. Okay. So what I'm asking is, what is what you will do to keep Mrs. Ross safe. So it's, you just, the answer is, uh, I cannot. The answer for this one is to just elevate or elevate the side rails and make the bed lock on like that. Then, para hindi mahulog, to prevent fall of the patient. So Mrs. Carmody has been sitting in a chair watching television for the past two hours. When you come to help her change position, she wants to lie on her back and sleep. What should you do? Okay? Marami sa inyo, hindi, ang naka, hindi nakakuha dito. Okay. Uh, si patient naka-sit for two hours. Then, nag-decide siya na humiga. 
ng halos same position pero uh, supine pero almost same same position ba, uh, bakit ko nasabi same position parehas pa rin na likod niya okay ang na-pressure because 2 hours nga siya kanina na uh, na, 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 na nanonood ng TV then likod na naman maglalay na naman siya sa likod niya so possible na si Mrs. Carmody is magkaroon siya ng mga pressure ulcer. So, what you need to do is to encourage Mrs. Carmody not to lie on the uh, back. Okay? So, she can turn, okay, like lateral position or sideline position or you you just put uh, pillows on the back. So, this is the right answer for this question. Then, Mrs. Eller, who is paralyzed on his right side, is sitting into a chair next to his bed. Every time you look into his room, he has a slump over to his weaker side. What should you do to position him properly and maintain his alignment? Actually, for those patients who is paralyzed, we are putting a tale sa, sa kanila kasi nga talagang mag-slump sila. So, and pwede mo rin silang lagyan ng unan sa likod and dito sa may bandang paa para hindi sila dumulas. And then dito sa kamay, isiksik mo siya dito sa may, may weak side para hindi siya kumanon. So, yun yung pwede mong gawin to maintain the alignment of Mrs. Mr. Eller. Mrs. Hillman, who weighs 200 pounds, so mabigat, begins to stand up from the chair where she is sitting, knowing that she often gets dizzy without warning. You offer to help her, but she insists that she is able to stand up by herself. What safety precautions should you take to prevent potential injury? I'm not asking you to give me uh, answers of transferring patient from bed to wheelchair. I'm asking what are the safety precautions that you can do for potential injury. So the potential injury is risk of fall because related to dizziness. So what you can do if your patient insists, okay, we should respect the patient. If the patient insists first, is you explain the patient what are the risks pag tumayo siya ng walang assistance or mag-isa, okay, pag nag-insist uh, nag si patient, Okay, wala tayong magagawa, but we can assist her. Pwede tayong sa likod or pwede tayo dun sa may gilid niya to assist the patient. Baka naman hindi siya ma mahilo. So, mag assist lang tayo. So, I'm asking what safety precautions should you take? Okay, so first you explain the procedure to the patient to explain what is the risk. Then, you first answer what is the safety precautions. So, safety precautions is to prevent fall. Okay, so answer what I'm asking. Don't make it complicated. How many people are needed to help? So, 200 pounds siya. So, pag transfer ka, if ever, from bed to wheelchair, ibig sabihin, si patient mo is nakakalakad. Okay? Kaya niya nga, eh, begins to stand up with the chair where she is sitting. Kaya niya. So, you can have two, two, uh, two or three. Kung meron kayo manpower, two or three. Na uh, tao to safely transfer the patient. Then, Mrs. Romano is sitting in the chair in her room while her niece is visiting. When Mrs. Romano says she wants to get back into her bed, her niece says that she will help her. You offer to help her, but the niece says she can do it by herself. What you should do? Of course, if someone is offering like niece, na help kayo sa pagsisit kay patient. Okay? Let them do. Encourage. It's there. Actually, pag may mga bantay sa hospital, dapat talaga. Kaya nga sila bantay is uh, or dalaw. Kaya nga sila nandoon is to help you to take care of the patients. It's not, they are only there, available there, but they are not doing anything. You should teach them how to do that. So, if the patient will be discharged, will go home, they will know what to do. They will not be dependent to your care. So, let her do, okay, but with assistance. Okay, you ask the, you ask the niece, okay, if you, you know the, 
you know the procedure already, you can demonstrate it to me. Then if I if it's correct, okay, then you can demonstrate to your to Mrs. Romano. So that's what you can do to your patient. A patient who is unable to reposition himself is at risk of developing serious complications. So I'm asking what are the complications three of these body systems, name of three body systems, complication, and ano yung mga interventions mo. So pwedeng sa respiratory system, you can have pneumonia, you can have pulmonary embolism, uh, you can have atelectasis. What you can do, you can do incentive spirometry, okay, turning the patient side to side, exercise, okay, cough, coughing and deep breathing exercise. So, sa neurologic naman, depression, okay, you can have therapeutic communication to the patient, let the patient uh, uh, maglakad, magmobilize para malibang siya. Then, sa urinary system, pwede magkaroon ng renal calculi si patient, like yung mga bato-bato sa, sa kidney, pwede rin siyang magkaroon ng urinary tract infection, decrease kidney function. Kasi hindi siya gumagalaw. So, anong pwede mong gawin? Palaka rin si patient. Increase oral fluid intake. Okay? And then, to prevent the infection, acid ash diet, or, or he can take yung mga vitamins, acidic na mga, like vitamin C, like uh, oranges, pwede niyang kainin. Then, sa digestive, pwede siyang magkaroon ng constipation, incontinence. So, what you can do is increase oral fluid intake and then exercise. In skin integrity or integumentary, she can have pressure ulcer. So turning is the best every two hours. Then cardiopulmonary, cardio, cardio, uh, pwede siyang magkaroon ng mga DVT. Okay, DVT, deep vein thrombosis. So what you can do is you, you can put stockings, anti-embolic stockings, pwede rin siyang magkaroon ng mga clots sa mga veins niya and arteries. So, walking is the best. And mobilize, mobilization is the best. So, yun yung hinahanap ko. Both of complication and what are the intervention. So, here, match the column 1 to column B. If we're talking about difficulty breathing, okay, Difficulty breathing is for Fowler's position. Receiving enema or labatiba, okay? Naglalagay ka ng tubig sa puwet, okay, para tumay si patient. Yung mga patient na hindi makatain, nilalagyan ng enema. So, ang position nila is Sims position. Hindi siya pwedeng lateral kasi pag lateral is nakaganon lang siya, babalik siya. So, medyo dapat, medyo naka semi-prone, semi-lateral siya. So, so Sims ang tamang uh, position. Then, preventing pressure of the back, of course, lateral position. Kasi, di lang dapat supine. Dapat nila lateral mo din siya pag tinaturn mo siya. Giving birth is lithotomy. Nakalagay yung pa sa stirrups. Then, legs higher than the head. So, use for shock patient, trendelen birth. So, mas mataas ang paa kesa sa ulo. Then, female perineal care, it is dorsal. Recumbent position. A is a thick layer of uh, padding that is placed on the mattress to help make the bed more comfortable for the patient and protect the mattress from moisture and soiling. It's not the incontinent pad or the bed protectors because it is a thick layer. The correct answer is the rubber sheet. A sheet is a small flat sheet that is placed over the middle and the bottom and is used for lifting. So this is draw sheet. Remove dirty sheets toward your Remove dirty sheets toward your uniform. It is false. It should be away from your uniform. Then, write the correct sequence of bed sheets you need for bed making. So, dito marami nagkamali. So, first sheet is your top, uh, sorry, bottom sheet. Next is your draw sheet. Next is your bed protector. 
your top sheet, your blanket, and your pillowcase. So, ganyan yung ayos pag nag-demo kayo ng bed making. You need to make sure that the side, sa blank side or the side without hem will be touching. So, eto, pinaulit-ulit ko to nang nai-discuss kayo, kung nakinig kayo at nanood kayo, it will be good side. Yung walang hem, ang tawag sa kanya good side. Yung may hem, ang tawag sa kanya bad side. So, this will be the answers for bed making and positioning. Then, last is the hygiene. Okay. Hygiene. So, in this picture, why is the person positioned on this side? So, the patient is positioned on this side because we need to... This is unconscious patient. So, we are giving... Uh, oral care to unconscious patient or dependent patient. So we need to place the patient into lateral position to prevent aspiration. What is the purpose of the tongue depressor? So the purpose of your tongue depressor is to assess for the gag reflex, okay? Gag reflex, to assess for gag reflex or to assess any uh, abnormality in the oral cavity. What are the benefits of batting? Actually, it's very easy. Just actually, it's very explainable. I'll not uh, cleans what it will clean. Okay, cleans the body parts, it removes. What it removes dirt or microorganisms. Stimulates circulation, exercise muscles, which is unused muscles. You are delegated to give Mrs. Johnson a bath before beginning. What information do you need? Okay, of course. Ano, may order ba dito si doktor sa bed bath? Okay. Si patient ba is, i-check mo muna yung doctor's order. Yung environment ba is okay. Patayin ng AC para hindi na maging si patient. And, 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 kompleto ba ang yung gamit? Madali lang to. Self-explanatory. When you're shaving the face and underarms with electric sh sh razor, shave towards, not against, towards the direction of the hair growth. Sometimes a patient or resident may need PRN care. Next to the following condition, write down what hygienic and grooming care you will provide to the patient. First one is Mr. Ludwig have been in coma for two weeks. Of course, you will give the full bed bath. Your patient is in coma, so you can give full bed bath. All the hygienic care, shaving, all perennial care, all what I've, I've told you. Then, Mrs. O'Brien is incontinent, so you can do diaper change and perennial care. Next. Mr. Johnson has a very high fever and is sweating a great deal. You can do partial bed bath or bed bath. Okay, para pababain ang fever ni patient. Then, So, some of the steps are listed below. Write down the correct order of the steps in the provider below. So, sequence only, letters only. Okay, so this is for oral care. So, first is your, the
first is you get the supplies. Then put into the overbed table. Letter B. Then you position the patient. I mean position. Raise head the head of the bed as tolerated. So next is letter E. So B and E, then maglagay ka ng towel. B. Then wet the toothbrush. Wet the toothbrush, then position the toothbrush into 45 degree angle, letter G, to gums and move gently. Then rinse it, then dry the person's mouth and chin thoroughly using a towel. Actually, you can see it in your uh checklist sa back ng module oh, wala pa nga wala nga pala ako binigay na module sa inyo sa back ng module to to wala nga pala kayo yung book anyways okay so that is the sequence next is female so Identify the sequence kung paano ka magpiperineal care sa patient, sa female patient. So first is your labia majora. So letter B. Next is your labia majora, letter D. Next is your clitoris, letter C. Next is your urethra, letter E. Letter F, vagina. And lastly is your anus, letter A. Sa lalaki, You will start with the urethra, letter B, glans penis, sa ulo, then letter D, shaft, letter E, scrotum, letter F, under scrotum, and then last is the anus. You always consider to clean from cleanest to dirtiest. You are assigned to assist one of your residents, Mrs. Scott, with her daily personal hygiene. But today, Mrs. Scott, who is usually very cooperative, tells you that she doesn't feel like batting and asks you if he can how you will handle the situation. So for this situation, always respect the patient's will. Okay, so after explaining to him what is the risk of not taking bath, okay, what are the disadvantage, your patient still uh, don't want so you respect and then you document and then you inform your superior a person who has intravenous IV line look for the picture and write down the correct order so nagbibihis ka ng patients so this is affected so I told you if it's unaffected you first choose the undressing you will choose, pag, mag, pag magtatanggal ka ng damit, undressing, you will choose the unaffected. So, kabalik taran pag dressing. So, unahin mo sa dressing is affected. So, ano yung mga affected? Yun yung may IV, yun yung may mga fracture, yun yung may mga paralysis, or may mga weakness. So, ang uunahin mo ay, first is yung suero, B, then C, and then A. Arrange the sequence of the body part that will be washed first during bed bath. Use beds, use letters only. Legs, perineum, face, arms. 
Okay, so this is Larry. So, ano uunahin mo? First is C, face. Then, D, arms. Then, E, chest. Then, H, abdomen. Then, A, legs. Then, F, back. Then, G, buttocks. And then, lastly, is the B, perineum. Arrange the sequence of the procedure we will do for a patient hygiene and grooming. Use letters only. So, ano unahin natin? So, first is the shaving, letter D. Then, we will do the nail care, letter C. Then, we will do the Foot care, letter E. Then, letter B, back care. And yung pinakahuli is yung perineal care, letter A. When you're shaving patient, suddenly you cut the skin, what you will do, of course, if there's any bleeding, kahit anong first aid sa bleeding, you should put pressure for 5 to 10 seconds, okay, to stop the bleeding. Back care is not done to patient who had previous heart attack because it can mobilize the the clots and can uh, and can bring the clots in different parts of the body as i've discussed before then we have four types of back massage we have the effleurage we have the petrissage we have the deep friction massage and we have the tapotement positioning unconscious patient on side lying position during oral care prevent him to a condition called aspiration. During food care, food care, we should not soak the foot of the patient feet. Diabetes mellitus. I hope you learned from this discussion. Good luck. Good luck and thank you.